So it has been a very complex system. It's not, you know, sometimes I try to express that it's not like building a bridge from point A to point B. It's much more complex than that. We call it a third set of locks, even though we do have three locks. Uh, we have the Miraflores, Pedro Miguel, and Gatun. But basically, it's to add one more lane because the existing locks, they already have two lanes. So we are adding one more lane. And the components are basically a new locks, one in the Pacific and one in the Atlantic with three steps to raise from the uh, sea level into the Gatun Lake level. And that is to raise a ship uh, an average of 85 feet. And also we are using water saving basins uh, so that we can reutilize the water back into the system. We have to improve the existing navigational channels. We have to make them again wider and, lo and, and deeper. We have to build new alignments, uh, channels to get into the new locks. And also we have to deepen Gatun Lake navigational channel as well as raise the, the Gatun Lake about 45 uh, centimeter or actually about a foot more. And here again, some of the components uh, from a plant view. Uh, the widening that we have to do in, in the uh, Gatun Lake, the access channels to the Pacific, the two locks and deepen uh, both canal entrances, sea entrances to the canal. So as you could see, we do use a lot of the existing uh, infrastructure. One other thing that is important in this, when you look at it from the risk side, is that a lot of the work is, is about dredging and uh, excavation of uh, materials, two things that the canal has been doing for the past 92 years. We have one of the largest uh, dredging companies in the world, in the Panama Canal. We have the largest deeper dredge in the world today. And we are operating two dredges, uh, uh, which we are working 24-7, 365 days a year. So that work between the locks is going to be done by the Panama Canal Authority ourselves. And we already have uh, been working in both Pacific and, and Atlantic entrances. Uh, because we did some improvements in those uh, two entrances for the canal today in the projects that we already are conducting. And then we, the main projects will be actually building the two uh, new locks, one in the Pacific and one in the Atlantic. And here are some of the dimensions. Uh, as you could see on the left, is the dimensions today. Uh, it's 110 feet wide by 1,000 feet long and only 39 and a half feet of draft. Those are very important restrictions to the maritime world today. And here is a, a size of the new locks actually use is 180 feet wide by 1,400 feet long. So it's 40% longer. And also will allow up to 50 feet of draft. Uh, with a, in the case of the chamber, it has 60 feet. So we have 10 feet under the keel clearance. You could see that the under the keel clearance in the actual canal today, it's about two feet. Uh, so it's very tight when we put the ship into that chamber. That's why it takes so much time. And here is the uh, a plan view of the um, of the new um, lane with the three water saving bases that I'm gonna explain how they, they operate. Here is the uh, water saving basin of the vessel. As you could see, we require the same amount of water. If we're gonna move a very large ship, or if we're going to move a canoe, because actually it's a uh, what we're talking about is a is a water eleva elevator, and the amount of water that is required to elevate the ship to the next level is the same no matter what size of the vessel it is. So it's not about displacement. Displacement is when you get in. Once the ship is in the chamber, you need all that water to raise it to the next level. So the so the canal today, for instance, utilizes 55 million gallons of fresh water to move a vessel from the Pacific to the Atlantic or from the Atlantic to the Pacific. So it's a large amount of water. And the way it operates, here's again the, the ship, the two ships, uh, and we divide in 20% um, the amount of water that is required, and that's what those lines. And the um, you could, from here you see that the, that's 20%, each one of them. And this level here is higher than the water saving basin number three. So the water actually moves, okay, 
into that water saving basin, that 20%. The next 20% goes into the water saving basin number two, and the other 20% into water saving basin number one. The 40% remaining is the one that we actually uh, let go into the ocean, and then the ship goes out. That water has been reserved. It's gonna be utilized again to get the next ship, but this one is going to be doing it reversed. Number one goes first, two second, third, and then we bring 40% more, and the war and the ship that goes into the next. So by saving that 60%, what this system actually do is that we will utilize 7% less water than the actual system today. But not only that, is that by having a larger chamber, we can accommodate more ships into that chamber. And what we need today to do two lockages, we can do one lockage and actually move double the capacity in, in terms of tonnage that we do on a single lockage today. So it actually maximizes the yield of the waters of the whole watershed. And that's one of the benefits of this system.